right, folks, it's another Friday in the life of the world. And from a little hangout in Lagos, southwest Nigeria, we say welcome to the hangout. Now, this week on the, well, I am Citizen Jones Hussein. Today on the program, Iran demands release of El Zagzaki to it for medical treatment. Jibrin Dogara and others missing as Bajabia Milan names 109 House Standing Committee heads. And later on, this one, Sokoto government explains why it is negotiating with bandits. I'm hanging out with Baba Jide Kolade Otitoji. Jide, it's a Friday. Yes, it's, it's a Friday. It's such a thing of joy. That's oh, yeah. It's Friday. Yeah. yeah, but it's a thing of joy yes. for, for us, but for the employer, no. <laughs> right, yes, right. We'll talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> but we have yeah. Tunde Abata here. Yeah, it's Tunde a pair of here. Yeah. Okay, so you know the team is ready. I hope you are. You know, there's an unpopular saying, which is most ideal in this instance. It says something like this. Your country does not give you what you want in your mind, but what you demand with your actions, end quote. Leader of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, IMN, promotes a brand of Islam that's not agreeable to the central government of Nigeria. And so when a demand comes on his behalf, it remains to be seen what the government's reaction would be. The Iranian Prosecutor General, Mohammed Montazeri, has demanded Ibrahim El Zagzaki to be handed over to him for medical attention. A letter to this effect was transmitted to President Mohammed Buhari. We wait for the next course of action, right, Jide? Yeah, this um, he has also appealed to the judiciary to do everything possible um, to ensure that Zazaki is granted bail and uh, the part is cleared for him as a captive because he described him as a captive prisoner to proceed on a, on a medical trip abroad. I don't know how... Specifically to Iran? Yes, to Iran. Um, I don't know how... Everyone knows that the, the, the brand of Islam, Islam that the IMN, IMN practices is the brand that is favored by the Islamic Republic of Iran, that is uh, Shiism. And uh, <clears throat> across the world, largely, uh, the, the Sunni are in overwhelming majority. So the, the Sunni, were, I'm told, are the moderates. Yes. Yes. The, the, are, the, the concept are, of the Ahmadiyya movement. Yeah, an overwhelming majority uh, across the world. So it's understandable that Iran has been really worried about the way the government has handled uh, Zagzaki's matter. They have, uh, before now, had repeatedly called for his release uh, in obedience to court others granting him bail. But people must remember that the government moved quickly to not just seek um, an injunction um, against the immediate um, release, re uh, immediate obedience. Okay, to the, to the, to court, the, court, order, the court order. Okay. They proceeded to file a murder case in the High Court in Kaduna and it is that murder case that, the, according to the government, uh, it wants to see to its logical conclusion uh, rather than simply releasing. So if the judge in Kaduna grants him bail, then he can be allowed to go home and uh, treat himself. Whether the government of a sovereign state like Nigeria will agree to hand over someone who is being tried for murder to a country like uh, Iran that cannot be said to be even-handed in this matter. Mm. I, I think it's very predictable that uh, this request will, will be turned down. And not that we are preempting anything. Mm. Uh, we adopt a looks attitude. <laughs> but, the, but, but Tunde, Let's break down, let's go into this uh, matter of the bail for El Zagzaki. It has pitted the 
um, defenders of the rule of law against those of us illiterate, in a, in a manner of speaking, uh, we don't understand the dynamics. I think what we have to understand is that the defenders of rule of law, as you said, then JJs, then less. What they have to understand is that Nigeria is a sovereign country. It's a sovereign country. No other country can come to Nigeria and dictate to us how to do our things. And you see, what bothers me is that it used to be a local issue. It has become a national issue. And by the demand of the Iranian government, that demand should be brought to them. They forgot to understand that Ezazaki is a Nigerian, and Nigeria is a sovereign country. When you now ask for the release of somebody who is being tried in his own country, it means you are breaching certain laws and you are demonstrating that probably all what he has been doing is for you. And okay, that you are that's what you mean by internationalizing, that's internationalizing the, the matter. That's globalizing and yeah, internationalizing yeah. that particular mm. matter. So what comes to mind is that even the lawyers in Nigeria who are talking about the rule of law, they forgot to know that by the dimension the Iran is introducing into it, they are making it more difficult for the government to release the man, because the man is a Nigerian citizen. So it behoves on the government of Nigeria to treat its citizens the way under the law of the country. When you are not starting the rule of law and using that excuse to empower another foreign country, to take a citizen of another country, mm. in your country, it, mean, it is a, it, it, they are convincing issues. Uh, and at, at this point in time, that is why patriotism comes in. The, uh, the so-called uh, human rights activists who are calling for the release of the man, they have to uh, draw, uh, draw a line of sem 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 demarcation. They are they so-called? Yes, they have to draw a line love, of love demarcation between the sovereignty of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the fact that the, Nigerian, the man is a Nigerian citizen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Iran, as a country, we all know the attitude of the global war to Iran, mm. especially the US. That's why I said they have internationalized and globalized that issue. Yeah. So it, it's, yeah. it's becoming more interesting and more difficult for probably the government of the day. Like he said, if the man is granted bail on Monday, because he's supposed to go to the Kaduna State Court on Monday, yeah. if he's granted bail, the onus is also on the government of okay, Nigeria the next step, to bail, decide whether to release The bail him. hearing is fixed for it's fixed for Monday, Monday, July Ju Ju July 29. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. okay. the onus is on the government of Nigeria to now demonstrate that. Does it mean that Nigeria has no no legal, uh, no, no medical facilities to treat its citizen that is under its own law. Okay. I, do, I, I can't just understand. That's why I'm saying that by uh, Iran coming out to say that it should be released to them, it appears they are, uh, they are, they are behaving as if Nigeria is not a sovereign yeah. state. Yeah. At a time like this, it's, you, 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 you are between and betwixt. Um, do you yield to this or yield to that? Yeah, that's why I said it's predictable what the reaction of the government will be. I have always demanded that he be released because I don't see any <laughs> any gain in simply keeping him there in detention along with his wife. He has seen a lot. Uh, but I'm also against the, the resort on the part of the IMN to violence. At the time when I accused the army of using disproportionate force against them, I didn't imagine that a day would come when on their own, they would go out and be burning pe uh, people's cars. People went to the National Assembly to, be the aggressor. to, 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 to co conduct one business or another. You said their cars are blazed. Uh, their cars are blazed. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in, the, in the crossfire, we lost a deputy commissioner of police and even a journalist oh, and, and other yeah. people. So it's, it's, the, it's the violent dimension that I'm really worried about. And I don't think, even now that it has assumed a violent tone, that the government will be disposed to the idea of handing him over to, um, to a, for a country <laughs> like Iran. Because who says even why there that uh, the rest of them in Nigeria could not be plan planning something sinister? We all know the role that Iran played in Lebanon with using the Hezbollah. And it got so bad that even the man who rebuilt Lebanon, Hariri, mm. was yeah. murdered. Yeah. 
I, I, you I know, remember. the billionaire who invested his funds to rebuild his country was murdered by by this uh, undesirable element. So it is a very dicey situation. I I think that now that the case is before the Kaduna High Court and the case the case of murder, I can only appeal that the they should expedite action on the matter, get the uh, get his case had um, uh, uh, in record time, so that justice can be served. I don't want a situation in which the case will be delayed needlessly. His as we failing have. health is something that should be uh, put into the mix. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, it's true. When you if you look at his pictures, his uh, current pictures. He has clearly lost uh, lost weight, and anyone will be worried. I don't want to see uh, Zazaki die in detention because it could be disastrous for our yeah. nation. And yeah. those Muslim groups that came out during this week to say, look, we don't want another Boko Haram. Government should deal with this matter uh, in a manner that will ensure that we do not, by our own hands, create a it's new Boko Haram. I think that... Those Muslim groups should be taken seriously. All we want is peace in our country. Yeah. And we, we cannot say we have peace at this time. There's insecurity everywhere. So we have to handle the matter of the IMN uh, in a very responsible manner so that they don't, um, they don't lead to a serious conflagration. It doesn't lead to a serious conflagration in our country. The result of which nobody is... Nobody is, is, knows. Nobody yeah. can predict. Tunde, you know, this, the El uh road to detention has been a long time in coming. And this is, for me, it, sometimes in the country we tend to look at effects and not the cause, causative factors. From 1979, El Zagzaki had been uh, nurturing this dream of, of introducing his brand of, of Islam. Islam. What did, did we do? Well, I think, uh, first of all, we have to admit that all governments, except the Shagari government, failed to judge, uh, I failed to judge, uh, we failed to say that the yes, secular system. Secular, yeah. And uh, secularism is based on the fact that any aspect of religion is, is practiced based on our own national laws. But because uh, in, a, in Nigeria is a country which most of our leaders, they are not bold enough to do what they are supposed to do. In 1979 or 1983, I could remember, when Masasini started his own brand, I think the, a civilian government headed by the Italian Shio Shagari, they actually took a decisive action and dealt with, with it. it. Yeah. And the thing never really the said again. In fact, there was a time in which a particular well in Kanu, they saw that there was uh, blood inside that particular well. But you never imagine that a civilian government, if you compare the action of that government then and now, I think that government dealt with that situation well, and they were able to nip in the bud. So in as much as we are asking people to have a, a, a freedom to practice their own religion, they have to practice it within the laws of the country. Yeah. And the moment government looks the other way, where they are gaining ground. I told you the other time that at a particular place in the Gos, when they are saying their Muslim prayer around one o'clock, the the Islamic prayer, when they are doing no, no, no. there won't be I, movement I of vehicle. There won't be because movement of vehicle until it, it was the fashion law government that stopped closed it. closed down the place for one week and that if you must practice your religion, do it within the precincts of your mosque. Yeah. And that is stopped. So we need a government that is so decisive to nip this in the bud. Because like you said, you said the man has started since 1979. It has been growing wings. Whatever will make a religious sect to confront the military, I think that thing started about five years ago, to yeah, confront the military yeah, yeah. Hello, and stop the convoy of the chief of army staff. I think that was the point where the thing got escalated. And we don't have a history of managing situation in this particular country. It's really when government is prevaricating. Yeah, they don't okay. know what to do. So I think, uh, like he said, we don't need another Boko Haram. And government doesn't have to expand its own frontier. We are fighting Boko Haram in the Tunde, northeast. We are fighting uh, uh, people uh, in the southwest. Now you have introduced Boko Haram. I can go there for, for 10 seconds. Yes, yes because what it we started that we do like have to a Charles expand. thing Three. in mm -hmm. 2002. Two, yeah. We did nothing, and here we are. OK, as we always say, as is to provoke the debate, let the debate continue. OK, then. 
On to our next subject. Politics everywhere, we are told, is an interest-driven game. And therefore, when it comes to sharing the spoils, the same interest element takes center stage. Speaker of the Federal House, Femi Bajabia Mila, inaugurated chairman of 109 standing committees of the House, and you want to know this, as well Speaker Yakubu Dogara and Honorable Bajabia Mila's staunch supporter, Abdul Mumin Jubrin, mm -hmm. lost out. Even as the number four citizen appeals to members who were unlucky to take it in good faith. You know, in politics, I'm told that a paranoid is one who knows a little of what's going on, Jide. <laughs> yeah, the one thing that is, that I was observed since yesterday is that House of Rest members are reluctant to talk about this matter. I've called um, a few friends amongst them, and they just don't want to talk about what happened. I, they are tongue-tied. I, I don't know. <laughs> Naturally, you would expect that Abdul Mumin Jibrin will come away with his usual committee of finance. Uh, but that's the committee that has been given to Faliki now. Yeah. Uh, he cannot, normally he will not get the um, public accounts, which is, the, in my view, the most important committee in the House of Reps, because all the ministries, all the departments and agencies, they submit their accounts to the Committee of uh, Public Accounts, and it's like the it's like the in, the auditor, okay, of of, 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 the, of, of, of the government, government accounts, yeah. expenditure, yeah, yeah government accounts. So it's a very very it, important. It keeps the books. Yes, and. I say he could not have taken that because it's usually reserved for the opposition, you know? And in the Senate, uh, Senator Lawan, who is today Senate President, held that uh, committee, committee chairmanship yeah. for eight years yeah. because yeah. The, the, uh, the, uh, the, his party was in the opposition at that time while the PDP heads were, uh, his party was in the opposition. So, but those are after finance, um, public accounts. At least it's possible that he was offered what he didn't want. <laughs> I'm not saying that with finality because I've mm. not spoken with him. But that is the suspicion of a, a good number of people because having labored hard to enthrone um, the speaker, People will expect that it will be rewarded. So it's a massive shock to a lot of our people that this has not happened. And the speaker has increased the number of um, committees to 106 from and 96. Nine. Uh, 109. Is it 109? 109. Yeah, 109. Okay. So 105. I mean, 96 to 105. That's what I had. They increased it by nine. Nine, nine. They increased it by okay. nine. So. That was meant to create more opportunities to please people. Remember, even when Dogara did the same thing, Dogara increased the number of committees. Now we have Bajabi Amila too, increasing it again. Because these committee issues created problems for Ete <coughs> uh, at that time. Patricia. Patricia Ete. And in the wisdom of uh, the people who came after her, they decided that, okay, finance, for example, should be split into two so that out of finance you can carve out customs. Customs used to be simply under finance. So you have a situation in which they decided to carve finance into two so that custom can be a separate committee and someone will chair custom. All in the desire to please members because when members are not happy, there will be, there will be no peace in the house. The, chair, the speaker will not enjoy his mm. tenure because mm. there will be rebellion oh, yeah. of all sorts. So this is uh, this is where we a are. A strategy. This is where we are. So a strategy of increasing the number of committees is meant to please as many it's people as possible. And in his own case, the PDP members were very much more than a hundred of them were very much involved in mm. his victory. Oh yeah. People oh, yeah. like Wale, Wale. Uh, Okay, I'm not surprised that he's been given the chairman of public account because he actually led 
what is called the PDP progressives, a group of lawmakers in the House of Reps who came together and made it clear that it was Bajabi Abina or nothing. And they even placed adverts in national dailies against the party. advice of their party that they should wow. support someone else. So it's not, uh, it's not shocking that the most important committee, the committee that is recognized by the Constitution and the standing rules of both the, um, uh, uh, um, and the rule book of yeah. both the National, uh, both the Chambers Senate. of the National Assembly yeah. Yeah. has now gone to, to uh, Honorable Wally okay, for the excellent role that he played in the emergence of, uh, of uh, Bajabi Amila. I know that the last, we've not had the last about this matter, but in the coming days, at least we'll be able to get more facts. What really went, went wrong? Someone was saying that um, the Abdumumin has seen it all. Uh, we will soon leave the House of Reps. Uh, why would this suddenly leave the House of Reps? He contested mm. Mm. for that position and he uh, won. All right. T today, you know, I, I have some figures here. Bajabia Mila had promised the PDP 60 seats, you know, 60 chairs. Yes. Uh, but the PDP has gotten down to 21 it's 30. and 30 no no 30 yeah. deputy chairs yes. yeah. but 21 chairmanship positions well uh, what we have to know is that like what we were saying i think something curious and interesting happened curious in the sense that you said a juve to Jubil, I, I, I mean, uh, that, that thing. Yeah. he walk he actually is today walk the speaker to his car and said okay. the man was under immense pressure. It was an acknowledgement by him that was supposed to be bitter about what they have treated. Something must have happened behind the scene. Yes. But that he could stay aloof and say that thing, it also undermines the fact that he may not necessarily rock the boat by quitting the party, like he said. There must have been an understanding that, look, OK, have your way for the interest of the party. And that is what we have been saying. Uh, politics Concession is about negotiation. If there is no negotiation, there will be concession. When there is no negotiation, there will be compromise. And if yeah. there is no compromise, the house will fall. I think that is why I'm saying it's very, very curious that that party is towing that particular line. And but for, for, for uh, Bajami Amila to increase the number of that, thing, it's also to pacify certain interests that may not necessarily be easy to pacify mm. in the opposition by bringing them in closer, but at a particular price. And that price is that the past person that everybody sees as his main supporter has lost certain things, which he must have done in the interest of the party and the interest of the country. I think uh, it is strange that Nigeria can move forward, like, but we can move forward by this particular thing, which means um, Abdul Mumuni will have demonstrated that the interest of the party and the future of the uh, the cohesiveness of yeah. the National yeah. Assembly yes. is better than, than his own personal interest. Yeah. Okay. Because that he can say in his Twitter handle that he admitted that the speaker was under immense pressure and that he has agreed to what he has done. Mm. Like he said, we may still see certain things in the following week. But I think that uh, they have surprised a lot of people mm. yeah. by that particular question. And I think it is good <coughs> for our democracy. And the more, let me now add something. With the kind of leadership we have in National Assembly now, the executive has no reason to worry. To tell Nigerians mm -hmm. okay. or to give any excuse mm -hmm. that the National Assembly is not helping it. Because they have surprised and they have shocked many people by their concession and their agreement to, pu to push the party yeah. and the National yeah. Assembly forward. And we are not expecting it anyway. We are not expecting it, but they have done it. You know, but, but you know, one of the big names, big wigs that mm -hmm. lost out was Leo Ogo, who was minority leader prior to now. So, yes. is, that, is that a surprise? It's a surprise because uh, consistently um, he's been patronized in that, uh, and he's been there for so long. And but, um, Dogara too, Dogara had also been patronized repeatedly in the house. He was chairman of House uh, Services Committee before he became um, speaker. Now, you would think that 
to achieve stability, you need someone like Dogara because he still retains his popularity amongst the PDP uh, folks. Many are thought that he will be the minority leader, but okay. he was not interested. Okay. He was okay. not interested. Was there something bigger? No, he was just not interested. He was not interested. Uh, somebody suggested that he wanted them to, he was not interested in the contest for it. Okay. That would be, okay. Uh, if they had offered it to him on a platter without the need for a contest, he would have taken it. Because at the end of the day, that was not what happened. He didn't show an interest. And you want, you look at someone like that with that popularity and um, experience, you will think that at least a committee will be given to him to chair. Maybe mm -hmm. a committee that he had headed in the past. But we cannot uh, teach Wajabi Amila how to run mm -hmm. the house. He, he, See, obviously, he's, he's like an old boy. He, he's been there to for home for almost forever. <laughs> and um, he, he understands his colleagues more than I do. We can only uh, project about actions. But he understands his colleagues and he he clearly has demonstrated that understanding in the actions uh, that he has taken. So we we'll just watch and see where it all ends. Uh, sometimes it's risky to empower the enemy or <laughs> the, uh, someone, <laughs> someone that you are not sure of oh, yeah. where, it not, you know, where it stands. And especially you, in a game like this. Yes. But, but, but quickly, I have a name here, Honorable Onofiok Luke is a new fight, a newcomer. Mm -hmm. Prior to now, I was the Speaker of Akwaibom State That's House of Assembly. is the Chair, Federal, Judici Federal Judici Judiciary yeah. Chair. Yeah, it, it's possible that, you know a lot of PDP members supported Wajabi Amila. So, and the Wajabi Amila and the people who worked for him, Faleke, Jibrin, and, and the rest of them, they know these guys very well. They were in touch with them every day, monitoring them and deciding amongst themselves who they thought would vote for them. They monitored these guys so much that the margin of victory mm. was close to their expectation, very, very close to their expectation, which means the people that they didn't expect to see vote for them, in most cases, didn't vote for them. Mm. In nearly so, all the cases, sorry, we, let, let so, we, we, we have company. Uh, Sylvester, sorry we kept you waiting. Sylvester is here in Lagos. Welcome, Sylvester. Good evening. I greet you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thank you for the good job you guys are doing over there. Thank you. We thank you. I, I, I just want to contribute to the issue of uh, Bajabi Amila and uh, Honorable Mobini. I I happen to be close to a little bit close to Mominu and he he happens to be somebody that is ready to sacrifice for the peace of the house and for the progress of APC in particular. Because I was surprised when the chairmanship, the finance chairmanship was given to Paliki and that is a contest between the two of them, and he was ready to step down for the for the other person, basically because he they still would have they would have rocked the boat. But thank God for the understanding that the three of them had and some intervention, inner intervention. Mm. What I'm saying now, very soon, <coughs> did they call Aminu uh, uh, Jibril, and he will confirm to him okay. that there was an undertone, and thank God. The team, they succeeded in putting it in. <coughs> yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, many thanks. And uh, considering uh, today that Jibril Aminu headed the campaign Jibril organization. Jibril Aminu. Abdul, 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 Abdul Mumin Jibril. 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 <laughs> uh, was DG of the campaign organization that brought him to power, you know. So uh, the, the manager, Sylvester, just told us, uh, when there's a rapport, you know, <laughs> you look at parties, the party supremacy and uh, the Nigerian state, and keep that in front, and then your, your personal interest uh, in your pocket. Well, well I think uh, he has pushed that particular interest further by convincing Nigerians that he's much more interested in the cohesiveness of his party. Mm. Because actually, when he emerged as the chairman of the 
campaign for Bajda Bermila. Uh, a lot of people were skeptical, but probably at the level tower, he would back out. But if there was anybody in this country who campaigned for Bajda it was following him from every from one state to the other, one state to the one region of the country to the other. And for him to have done that then, I think what he has done now is a further confirmation. If there is no uh, hidden agenda, and if there is nothing, it's hidden. Because if, there, if the house is cohesive, probably everybody will respect mm -hmm. anybody who is a principal it. officer in mm -hmm. that particular house. And anybody that made that po cohesiveness to be possible. Because if he has to work out, like I said, this morning he sent in a tw Twitter that he admitted that the speaker was under immense pressure. Mm -hmm. That yeah. pressure m m must have denied him the, yeah, position the position we expected yeah. him to it, take. It's only and natural. He, 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 it's he accepted, natural, yeah. he accepted and he helped the speaker by navigating that particular uh, uh, way, by having his way. Oh. So I think he has done something that is novel and that is also curious All and right. interesting in our politics. Okay, we'll take this breather and return, but please stay. We'll be back. Okay, then, we go back to uh, the talk table. The issue on the table at the moment, Mr. Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila has constituted 109 standing committees Committee. yes. um, for the House, and, of course, the chairman in place. Did it, quickly, uh, Linda Ikwazu is in charge of the committee. Maritime. Maritime and education. It's a plus. Yes, and if, that's another very important uh, um, committee because when you look at uh, even Nemasa, Nemasa is richer than more than seven Nigerian states put together. So there's so much work there oh, for yeah. her to do. And then when she combines that uh, with education, I think Linda has been given a very strong um, uh, committee to, to uh, and it, it shows the, the level of um, confidence that the speaker ha has in him. Yeah, you see someone in, like in, Namdas. In, in, in Shim. In, in, in Shim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, before I'm accused of being a misogynist. <laughs> 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 you, know, you know, in our own profession, there is no gender. Uh, just like the judiciary, uh, they are he, he, he. he okay. So, you find someone too like uh, Abdurazak Namdas. Namdas. Who Namda used to yeah. Who used to be uh, uh, in charge of the press committee, you know. Uh, he was spokesman of the House of Reps for oh, yeah. he, for years. Yeah, yeah. He has now been moved to am the army. Army, yeah. He's in charge of the army now. And um, you have uh, Mutara Liu from Bruno. He's now in charge of appropriation. That's a very important yeah. Yeah. The committee, I think, after public accounts, that's the next most important committee in the in the House of Reps. So, uh, I think that the way the House is positioned, there is uh, we can expect that there will be cohesion. Um Miller has been a very popular uh, speaker so far among his colleagues. The margin of his victory says it all. He has support across the parties, the parties. including even those little parties. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were prepared to give him support. So he has to demonstrate leadership at every point so that uh, the confidence reposed in him um, will be justified. Yeah. And when we begin to see real progress in governance, and uh, when the executive and the legislature uh, are seen to be working hand in hand for the progress of our nation, contrary to what we saw uh, last the last four years, years when the, the judicial, I mean, the legislature appeared adversarial, then Nigerians will be happy and we will see real progress. The, our budgets will be passed in record time and. Uh, we can plan because the budget cycle yeah. has always been a problem and it does not allow for proper planning. It does not even allow us to execute the budget sufficiently because you don't get the budget passed on time. So 
The project suffer, so many things suffer. So, but we are hopeful that under the current leadership of the National Assembly, just as my brother said, the president has no excuse. The president's minders have no excuse. He, the, he got the people that he wanted to add both chambers, and they must work together uh, to, 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 to yeah. take Nigeria to the next yeah. level. Tunde, you know, still holding on to that thread, uh, you don't see the danger of the, a section of the country insisting this is a rubber stamp National Assembly? Well, I think uh, for the interest of uh, national cohesion, I think we should, by the, by the margin so, of sorry, votes... Sorry, let me, let me pause a little. We have Natasha, am I right? The first lady, right? Am I right? Natasha is here. Good evening. No, no, police. Okay. Uh, I, I win business. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yes, by, the, by the margin of victory and the, the consensus that produced the leadership of the two arms of the National Assembly, you will see that there's really no reason for anybody to feel that probably a part of the country has been so changed. Because like he said, even for the emergence of the Senate President and the Speaker, people, you know, a particular part of the country voted for a particular candidate. Mm -hmm. And yes, some of them actually voted for the principal officers in both houses, which means there's a, there, there's a compromise somewhere mm -hmm. and that there's a unanimity of purpose that we must move forward. The National Assembly themselves, uh, leader, uh, members themselves, I don't think they, they would have loved what happened in the last four years. Okay. If okay. the National Assembly leaders can, I mean, bury their hatchet and compromise for cohesiveness, I think there won't be any reason for any part of the country to face or change. So far, you know, I always tell people that if you have 11 players on the field and they all go out in the name of Nigeria to win a match, let the nine of them be, be from Edo State or from Safara State. It doesn't people really will not come out and say, bring, bring uh, it was results. that guy from uh, Edo State that scored that mm -hmm. match. They will say Nigerians uh, have yeah, won. Nigeria yeah, as yeah. a country has won. I think that spirit, we should okay. give these people the benefit of the doubt. All right, so the, the um, National Assembly is uh, gradually uh, coming into space and, and place and keep the debate going but then we must uh, our job here is to anytime we we see anything we think is not going the way it should we bring it here all right then we move on you know sometimes in this country you are confronted with far too many things for one to be interested properly in any of them any one of them Take the news oozing out of Sokoto State, for instance. The state authorities there are engaged in an intensive set or series of negotiations with bandits and other armed elements operating within the boundaries of the state. Head of Media and Public Affairs to Governor Amino Tambua reveals that the talks have started yielding positive results. Now, the image maker Abubakar Shekara let it be known that many rescued victims of kidnapping who were treated at government um, house medical facilities are to be reunited with family members in neighboring Zamfara State very soon. We, we must make a sense of all of this. But first, let's hear this. Watch it. <laughs> A non bandit? Yes, he's uh, one of the commanders of the bandits in Zamfara. And they were saying this during the peace meeting before government officials. <coughs> they were saying, look, that no soldier could have killed him. Uh, he just decided on his own to... To give in. To, uh, to, to embrace peace because he knew that one day um, he would die. That, um, you know, uh, the Quran says everyone will die one day. So that is, he said that is the injunction, or well, the, the, what made him to decide to uh, go for peace, that nobody, no army, uh, no, no, no 
soldier no, can't. No, no son of man. Only no soldier. He said no soldier can locate can't even and get kill where him. He is. That you, if you, if, that is, in fact, in an extended uh, um, tape that I, I, I watched on you on uh, Facebook, he said, if any that is praying for the military to try and come to where he is, that they will not go back alive. So when bandits speak in this manner, is 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 particularly shameful. I don't blame the governors who are negotiating. Because you accuse governors of not doing enough, of not spending security vote on security. But <laughs> the armed forces are not delivering the decisive blow on the enemy. Look, we send the Air Force <coughs> to, to Zamfara. We send the army to Zamfara. They couldn't stop the killings. Neither could they stop the killings in Casina, because these guys moved into Casina and continued to kill people. If I were in the shoes of uh, um, Amino Tambua, I would, I, would, I would do the same thing. Because, look, in Zamfara now, the killings have stopped. The Fulani uh, who are holding hundreds of, uh, of uh, abductees, yeah. They have decided to release the abductees in their hands. And the Hausa, who were also kidnapping Fulanese, because the Fulanese are accused of being, uh, of being majority of the bandits and that they were kidnapping Hausa farmers on their farms. Yeah. So the Hausa now constituted um, a, a vigilante force known as Ensake. So they too began to kidnap Fulani women and their children. Wow. As punishment for the kidnapping of their own people on their farms. So, but now the two groups are exchanging abductees, mm. they are releasing abductees, which means that the peace measures as put uh, together by uh, Governor Belo Mutawale in Zamfara are working. Now, at the height of the takeoff, at the, at the takeoff of the peace moves, what happened in Sokoto? 37 persons were killed in one day in Sokoto. Because in three... Even while this peace move Yes, why this one... On. Yes, why the killing stopped here? You know, I always say that the states that are contiguous to the flashpoints yes. are not safe. Yes. Yes. So why the killings were uh, stopped in Zamfara? We now saw a spike in killings in Sokoto. 37 persons killed in one day. And the president said, look, I'm going to crush the bandits. But you are not going to wait for the president to cross the bandits. You have to do something. It is that same Sokoto where we had that a GOC sent uh, more than 400 million uh, to, and was hijacked by, by, by the soldiers who were asked to go and deliver it somewhere. The soldiers removed their uniforms and ran away. So now, if, for example, the governor was providing you with money to buy weapons to fight these undesirable elements, and it's not getting results. Will he not want to go and negotiate with the bandits and just pray to God and see whether uh, yeah. that will be better? That's, what, that's, why, that's why we have this situation. It's a demonstration of the, of the lack of confidence in the capacity of the armed forces to defeat the enemy. Today, today you know, um, a criminologist said years ago, Society prepares the crime, the criminal com commits it. Now we are seeing the criminal one-on-one. -on -one. So we negotiate with him, and so be it. Is this peace uh, move permanent or? Well, well I think uh, peacemaking and peace building, they are a continuous process. If you make peace in one particular front, you have to build the peace that you have made. And like he said, uh, if we all agree, that the tactics and strategies of the, Nigerian, uh, of the Nigerian armed forces have failed. Let us allow the governors who are chief executives of the state, who are closer to those people, de um, deploy any means possible. To, to the, we produce these people? Yes, yes. We, we produce, produce the bandits? We produce them. It's a, it's, a, it's a function of the system that you can spend the whole day here talking about. Because when you look at poverty and lack of education, anything can come out of that. And this thing, goes back to about 50 years. I have always been telling people that, okay, 
if we agree that according to the United Nations, 30, out, out, out of 13.2 million children out of school in Nigeria, 11 of them are probably from the north. What have it's the 11 million. 11 million. What have the governors done? Because these people, don't, don't, they don't just become bandits one day. It's a progressive thing. Yeah. Right yeah. from when they were in primary school to secondary school to age of 18, 19, 20. Let us, as a matter of fact, make education uh, uh, and when you hear, sorry, when we hear that many states across mm -hmm. the country don't draw from the UBEC, you UBEC, know, the UBEC funds. They don't funds. draw from it because they disagree as per, as per certain things that we, I would not like to discuss here. Because even states or areas that you think they are educationally advantaged, advantaged. Mm. there are many areas in those states that are educationally disadvantaged because of what you have said, that they are not drawing from the UBEC. And when they draw from the UBEC, go around even in the southwest. You'll be shocked to see some uh, sources that are referred to oh as yeah. schools. Oh schools. Yeah. Why oh have yeah. they failed oh to yeah. draw this particular right. thing? Mm -hmm. So what, what we are saying now is that in all parts of Nigeria, let us uh, 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 embrace because poverty and ignorance. If you are poor and you are ignorant, you are the easiest prey to economic and political enslavement. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I think what we have to do is that let us begin to tame what will lead to bandits seizing the. A particular state and you have to negotiate with them because mind you as you are negotiating with bandits and money is exchanging hands you are also empowering them indirectly and you are emboldening them like if you, you negotiate you, you have Shokoto that information state, if you negotiate in you, you, state, you, you have that information yes you know, that no, money money well i don't know no, why you negotiate they claim that they didn't give any money okay. they, they will say okay. they didn't give money mm. but like i said if you negotiate in a particular state neighboring states Will be, be watching, will be no, they must watching. Do, they must do and they will be emb emboldened <laughs> to get oh, the largest. So I think what we have to do in this country is, that apart from the fact that uh, I want to call on the president now, you know, before the election, he knows about it. The president did say that they will not share surface issues. I think it is time for us to stop using old tactics to solve emergent and more curious problem. Let mm. us do something about the leadership of the armed forces yes. and about the security agencies so that there will be a change. It, 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 the yeah. president has nothing to lose. Fresh air. Let yes. us have a breath of fresh air. People, these people are war weary. Uh, but but don't, don't worry, the have... president had dropped the minister of the interior and the minister of defense, so but that's a, a, big, a, a starting point, uh, Jide. Yes, uh, we have to encourage him to go. Yeah, to uh, go. The whole go yes. yep. It's not enough to simply drop uh, those two fellows. The, for, the former minister of defense, um, Mansour Dan Ali. The Kebi man? No, okay, Zamfara. Zamfara, yes, yes, from, yes, okay. He's yes, 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 from yes. Brine Magaji, yeah. Zamfara. One of the uh, local governments was hit by banditry. So was you that? can imagine, yes, yes. you can mm. imagine having uh, the defense minister, you know, uh, having a defense minister whose community was among the worst hit. Everybody yeah, will come and simply slaughter people and go away unchallenged. So, for me, it's a good decision to let him go. Let's see what the new man, uh, because I, I believe it's General Magashi that will get yeah. it, because he's the only general on that list. So, he's likely to get the <laughs> defense uh, portfolio. Let's see what he can do. New ideas are welcome. And even in tackling security in our country, we, we must be receptive to new ideas. Oh, yeah. You know, so oh, yeah. the president must realize that there are other people who can get that job done. If we come to a situation in which we think that only about three or four persons can secure us as a people, then we are not a country. We can't have a country this large with a projected population of uh, almost 200 million. You can't. You can't easily mute this development in Sokoto State because. A, a bandit is a bandit is a bandit. It's a bandit, and a lot of them, as I've said, a lot of them are not even Nigerians. I, I, imagine the, the gentleman, who the way he was speaking. Yes. Uh, my house is very, very warped, but you have... He was very confident and sure of himself. So, so he's... he's no, that so sure. even so... To even and show up himself. in public... And be saying something. Is, is something that and making those worries claims. me. To even show up. I would want to imagine that if you are a bandit, you, you have the blood of dozens of people or hundreds of people on your neck that you will not have the cheek to come out in public and proclaim your banditry. And we, but look at what he's saying, look, that it will not, it will, it will, that nobody, that if not because uh, uh, 
uh, it just felt like like uh, coming out. Oh yeah, stop other, killing otherwise that, that nobody it, would, have it would have called your bluff. Yes, I, I can't call the bluff of Abubakar. He's reaching us from Niger no, State. Abubakar, I greet you. Uh, Welcome. Hussein. Yes, sir. How do you do? I'm fine. Thank you for discussing this very important yeah, topic. Let, let's go there. I believe peace and tranquility is very important in Nigeria. Yeah. And uh, we have come a very long way. This issue of peace should be very, very looking at by the federal government. There is, there is need for us to look at the current and undercurrent causes of this crisis. And there is need for us to reform our educational system. Social studies being taught in primary school should prepare any citizen to be an ideal citizen so that we can we understand each other and live peacefully with one another. So the federal government should try to ensure that uh, they have been a lot, but they should try to ensure that peace and normalcy return into this country. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. We need more than anything peace. Uh, those you see, the, those governors can't fold their arms and watch their people being killed in the manner they are being killed. So, if they think that making peace with these killers who put an end to this, they will be willing to make peace. In Kano, the governor gave amnesty to cattle rustlers. It used to be a big problem in Kano. The Falgore Forest, on the way to Jos, and to the other local government, used to be dominated by bandits who will steal your cattle and take your cattle into the Falgore Forest and dare you to come and, uh, After come and confront them. They were killing vigilantes for fun. Then the government came up with the idea of uh, amnesty, and they embraced it, and it has worked. Kano is in peace. Cattle rustling is a thing of the past in Kano. It has worked. It also worked in Casina under the leadership of the Secretary of the Government of the State, Dr. Mustafa Inoua. But when Casina had it, it was successful in Casina, and the neighboring state, Zamfara, yeah. could not uh, do it, it became a problem. Because clearly, some will leave from Casina to go and commit banditry as we are, we are, it is allowed. Because their own colleagues were the ones catching them. They nominated their colleagues to catch anyone who breached the agreement. So they knew they could no longer operate in that place. They now left for Zamfara. Now, when they began to bombard them in Zamfara, and for want of where else to go, they came back to Casina and continued to kill people in Casina. You, you know, <laughs> my, my worry, Tunde and GD, yes. is yes. this freewheeling attitude of to these kill. guys. Yes. The free willing attitude. Yes. Yeah, because we can't deal a decisive because, blow. Because we are, we if, we sent, if we send the Air Force, the Army, and all of them to the place, civil defense, and we didn't, we, and we, we came up with a scotch at policy. Scotch mm. yes. Deal with them decisively. Exterminate them. In the la language of Yisra Shamir, the former Prime Minister of Israel. Israel. Mm. <laughs> the, none of them will come out and boast. <laughs> Yeah. Some of them will come out and boast. My but because say, we've been unable to defeat them, they are now in a position of strength. They are now dictating the terms. The terms, yep. So now, and then even negotiating. look, this, the, the, the <laughs> negotiation in Zamfara was, <laughs> was with the blessing of the IG. The IG okay. had a representative there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. like we had no choice. Please, stop killing our people. Stop killing uh, us. Uh, we will do uh, what you uh, want. Okay. That's where we are. It's, it's oh, it, oh, okay. We are helpless. It's, it, it shows the lack of faith Fit. in the capacity the, 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 and ability uh, uh, of the uh, Air Forces. Uh, ending on that note is very depressing. It, it's depressing uh, because uh, I've never know, seen where it, it happened. You know, it, uh, it's accepted. What I hear is that we don't oh, negotiate boy, with boy, terrorists. Boy. terrorists boy. on any part of the world. Yes. Okay, well, the debate must continue. Um, our job is to keep raking these things, on the, put them on the table, just so you make up your mind, nothing else. We must retire for the week, but we want to thank you for having been so faithful and I've also watch journalists hang out on other uh, platforms on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. The feedback channel is the same. 
Jide, uh, we, we need this weekend. We need it. Let's, let's <laughs> meet under the mango tree. That's <laughs> it. <is. laughs> it's okay. Tunde is a Christian. He does not do it. <laughs> it's okay. He, right, knows, he knows the place now. Yeah, he knows the place. Yeah. <laughs> we are out of here. Please take care of yourself. Bye-bye now.